Hey guys, today I want to be talking about hoarding Magic the Gathering sealed product, meaning you don't open it. And I'm going to give you some tips, I guess, how I do it. Uh, is it profitable? I, honestly, it's not. And what I look at, so I have the I have a few boxes of Innistrad. I purchased them at $100 back when I was in Virginia. Uh, the store I played at, Groovy Geckos, was going out of business and that was in 2009 no 2012 gosh 2012 and they had boxes upon boxes of Innistrad and it was like I mean it wasn't even a hundred dollars I feel like it was like ninety dollars um I purchased it at a little so they were selling boxes Groovy Gecko used to sell boxes at a hundred and twenty dollars a box so a hundred dollars was kind of a discount and there was no other place near you could drive to Richmond but I mean what are you why would you do that you have to buy from local card games so the first the second time Groovy Geckos no Groovy Geckos bankrupt four times when I was there so this was like the second to last time it bankrupt and it was like bankrupting as Phoenix Games or something it sold its inventory of Innistrad to me for pretty much a hundred dollars a box I had about I want to say seven boxes like in a none of them it wasn't a case it wasn't sealed and I was like oh cool whatever and I pretty much what did I do with them I have two sealed boxes right now I feel like I traded them to strike zone maybe sold them for some store credit I got rid of them at a very good price definitely at like hundred and fifty dollars I got rid of I would say on average the ones I no longer have I was able to get at $150 in cash or like $170 in store credit. And Innistrad was very good and that was the first time I realized, hmm, this is pretty good. And the next time I did that was with uh, a set called Modern Masters. Modern Masters I purchased a few cases of, uh, like two and a half cases of Modern Masters I believe, or at least two cases of it. And that was because it was a pre-order buy with my um, with some people in the Facebook group and none of them showed up showed up and that turned out to be actually very good for me because the modern master box went from our pre-order order buy was like 200 200 box and then went straight up to 280 and I remember it hit 280 because like I was able to trade them in for 280 in credit for pretty much dual lands which then went up even more in price so the it was a very very good deal modern master 2015 was very good for me now Right now, I just made a video and I'm buying uh, two cases, one case guaranteed, two cases maybe. I've been spending a lot of money lately on non-magic related products like uh, video games. Uh, I purchased a ton of them recently. I'm purchasing a website. I'm actually paying people to make a website. I did the graphic design work of the website. And yes, I am a graphic designer. I don't know if you guys know that because I love you seem surprised when I tell you that but yeah I am a graphic designer among something else I do <laughs> which I'm not gonna mention here it's nothing bad don't worry little kids and yeah so hoarding seal product might be worth it like I've never had a bad experience with it the other seal product I hoard I didn't really hoard it I just so happened to have an extra box I didn't open that I was gonna use to draft was Zendikar and that too worked out really well so when you look at the box prices right now, Conspiracy, I think it's like $80 a box. It's like $78 at my locals. It's interesting because you have cards in Conspiracy that are very, very powerful cards. Are they playable in Modern? Not all of them, no. Actually, most of them are not. Like Doc Fodden and I, I mean, all these cards I look at and I look at their current price, I say to myself, huh, why, why is this box like $78 a box? And if you buy them in cases, I'm sure you can get even lower than that. Uh, on Dave and Adams, it's like 85, but it used to be 80 a box um, until recently. Now is it like 90 a box? It's been climbing up a little bit, but there are still places you can get it for cheaper than Dave and Adams, which is a mass store that ships to you for free and also gives you. I really wish they would give you better, like, not that I'm complaining, better free merchandise when you like make like. I buy exquisite boxes and like. Um, and they're expensive, but like then like you get to that tier level and it's not like any reason to buy more. Okay, so hoarding Magic the Gathering sealed product 
could work. I'm not sure if uh, Modern Masters 2015 is the product that you want to be hoarding at this time. I think Conspiracy would actually be it. Uh, but it is an interesting product. I will keep it in an air-conditioned room because in Houston, extremely humid, extremely hot, and the foils are going to be damaged. I, I guarantee you a year from now, the foils are going to be extremely damaged in Houston. So I would open up as much of it as I had right now or I felt like opening and then if I did store it, I would store it in an air-conditioned storage facility which I need to visit uh, sometime this weekend. So yeah, hoarding seal magic products, I mean you can make a little bit of money but like again, what you're waiting so long, like you're waiting like forever to make a tiny, you're waiting at least two plus years to make like a tiny bit of profit. Or you're trying, and you don't even know if you're guaranteed that profit. So it's like, why wouldn't you just invest in like a bond or something? Because that's about the same rate of uh, return, and there's a guaranteed rate of return for most boxes. I obviously Innistrad did very, it's doing extremely well. And if I moved my two sealed boxes right now, I would get a lot more than I got in the past. But you know, if I bought a box for if I bought a box for like $120, which was the retail at the time, if they didn't go bankrupt. And it goes up in like two and a half years to a hundred and fifty dollars. That's like not that much, like because it's two and a half years later. Like I could probably be using the money for something better. And if I wanted to sell it, if I didn't have all these awesome local stores around me that would buy the stuff, then like if I want to sell on eBay, I'm gonna take you know ten percent of fees and like let's say twelve and a half percent of fees off hundred and fifty dollars. That's, you're not making any money. You're, you're just not making any money. Is it fun to draft? Yes, but unless you're waiting five years for it and hoping that none of the cards in it gets reprinted to oblivion, I don't know. Like, you know, I, I don't know. If you like opening boxes, old boxes, then it makes sense to buy an old box and open it. But if you're trying to make money from it, I, I don't think that's the right way to do it because it just takes so long for you to see any reward in the horizon. Like, it's just a light at the end of a tunnel, but the tunnel is like really, really dark and it's really long and you're just like, okay, cool. And you have to tell yourself, oh no, I'm not going to open this box today. And that's probably the hardest part. As you guys know, I have fat packs all the time and sometimes, actually I have random booster packs too, like just like lying around uh, from pre-release kits. Um, a lot of times when I get pre-release kits and like for instance, like I think the Dragon Maze had like Fate Reforged and something else like in as a pack. I still have those packs around, like I still have 36 Fate Reforged single packs around, I just kept them in a box uh, from the pre-release kits. So anyway, that is that. Bye guys.